Hi, this is Wayne Williams speaking of horses, and welcome to the show. We've got a great lineup of events for you, so stay tuned right here. It's time for Speaking of Horses. Speaking of Horses is made possible by Equisentials Horse Care Products for products developed by a horse person for horse people and horse use. Please check out Equisentials Horse Products. They have all the products you need to perfectly care for your horse's coat and physical appearance and well-being. Equisentials. And the Specialized Saddle will be the last saddle you'll ever need to buy because our patented adjustable fit system lets you precisely fit your horse or use the same saddle on different horses you may get in the future. Don't forget to check out our website and try a Specialized Saddle. You'll be glad you did. Hey, we're here in historic Gettysburg and just a stone's throw south of here in the very northern part of Maryland is the Carroll Expo. But we're going to catch up with Colleen Kelly here. So watch these excerpts right now as we interview with a wonderful woman on centered and balanced riding coming to us from Australia. Stay tuned. It's uh, Speaking of Horses and our half hour with Colleen Kelly. Well, my guest right now on Speaking of Horses is Colleen Kelly, and we're featuring this entire show on Colleen and all of her rider biomechanics, balance, seat, posture. It's all here on the, on the banner behind us. But I've had the privilege of working a lot of different events with Colleen, and we've had a, a great time at uh, different places around the country. But she hails from Australia and is really gaining quite a reputation right now across uh, all of North America as well for, for her concept. So, Colleen, welcome, and tell us a little about Rider Biomechanics. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, wonderful to be in Maryland again. What a fantastic state, and very beautiful. Uh, rider Biomechanics is all about the seat and posture of the rider, and what we do is we look at the balance of the rider, whether the rider might be tipping forward, or whether the rider is uh, tipping to the side, that kind of thing. And little tiny things like if the thumb rolls over in the hand, that we can actually measure how many pounds is being put on the two front feet of the horse. Okay, so you, there's a lot of things to be derived from this. And I know there's clinics in the background, but this is not going to bother us with this not microphone. We'll be fine. So when you get into that, uh, just take us through a basic balance seat posture uh, concept. Well, if we divide the body into a couple of different areas, say for example the rider's head, one of the things that we're finding that a lot of people carry their head in front of their body. And if the head is in front of the rider's body, or the body in general, not only will it give you a sore back, but it will also change the way that the horse moves. And then if we go down the body, then we're looking at the ring of the shoulders. And the ring of the shoulders, nearly everybody has one shoulder closer to the ground than the other. And then what that means is that if your right shoulder, for example, is closer to the ground, then tendency is for the horse to go to the right and put more weight on the right front foot. And so needless to say, we try to balance those shoulders up. And we've got lots of fun, interesting, very easy techniques to help with the shoulders. And then as we go down the body, we've got uh, the pelvis and the, and the base of where you sit. And we've measured a lot of riders on the trade stand and on uh, measurement equipment. And needless to say, uh, one seat bone nearly always heavier and one seat bone nearly always in front of the other. And so that can be a big problem. And we go down the rider again, we've got the rider's legs. And we have measured on the trade stand 40 pounds heavier in one foot than the other. And that wasn't a very large lady. She wasn't um, a very obese or anything like that. It was just that she literally leans to one side. Now, if you've got 40 pounds heavier in one foot, then needless to say, that horse is going to be crooked. 
Well, yeah, that to me that's an astounding number that you've got 40 pounds more on one side than the other, and you said it wasn't necessarily a large person. No, she wasn't much taller than me. I'm five foot three, and she was probably about five foot four or five. And needless to say, it was it was quite a surprise. I, I wouldn't have thought. I mean, even just looking at her. Uh, but you know, I mean, certainly we look at the chiropractic and and therapeutic uh, realm if it's if it's that far out. But that was our work order. It was just over 40 pounds heavier on one foot. Needless to say, that's pretty crooked. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think about the rider and seat when they look at posture like your banner right here, yeah. straight up and down from the side. Yeah. But a lot of people forget about front to back. If you're looking square on, are you, are you listing to the left yes. or listing to the right? So all of those have to be in balance. Oh, yeah. You, there's the four major points, which are front and back and left and right. And so front and back refers to being on the forehand, on the two front feet of the horse, or on the two back feet of the horse, which is engaged. And then you've got all the left to right stuff, which is, you know, one seat bone heavier, one shoulder lower, one hand higher, one uh, side of your head higher. And, of course, this this interesting phenomenon of standing very heavy on one foot. And uh, needless to say, this is why a lot of horses are very crooked. The jumping horse, they might open one front foot more than the other. So instead of both front feet being tucked up tight, they'll open one front foot, the dressage horse will be crooked. The reining horse can actually get injured. Uh, if, if the seat bone is, is heavier and, or one, one foot on the rider is heavier and they come into a reining sliding stop, you might see the reining horse actually leave lame. And he comes into the sliding stop sound and he leaves limping because it, it actually hurts the horse and so uh, that's, you know, that's bad news. Well, you know, when you think about all that balance, too, um, the other part then, once you work on getting the rider in balance with a horse, uh, are there any things, and I'm just asking this off the top of my head, horses are not always equal either. So you may have a horse, you know, it's like every person, you're right-handed, you're left-handed, uh, maybe you... Uh, your right foot is slightly larger than your left or vice versa. Horses are not always balanced perfectly either. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I was actually in Kentucky talking to uh, somebody that had won the Kentucky Derby and he pointed out something that I hadn't actually thought of and that is every horse has one foot bigger than the other. And the horse that's winning the Kentucky Derby better have its bigger foot on the outside. Now in Australia we have tracks that go to the right and we have tracks that go to the left and we had horses that race to the right and horses that race to the left and some can change but some can't and if the big foot's on the outside as they're coming from the home stretch as they're coming around that home turn if the big foot's on the outside it'll push the horse to the centre of the rail but if the big foot's on the inside it'll push it away from the rail which means they'll probably lose the race so yeah okay we've got a lot of issues. I always look at it this way one third is probably the horse one third is probably the rider and one third is everything else like saddlery chiropractic dentistry farriery all those things and of course good diet and things like that and uh, so my third of specialty is in the rider and it's uh, the balance and the effect on the horse and yes you're absolutely spot on right when the horses are completely different one side to the other because one of the things that I think about, and, and, and one of our sponsors of Speaking of Horses, is Specialized Saddles. And they fit saddles and have a system, you know, for endurance riding, but for trail riding as well. And, and they point out that if you buy a saddle in the U.S. with a standard tree, it's five and a half inches. All right, period. It's five and a half inch tree. You put it on the horse. The horse may be slightly off this way or slightly off this way so even the standard saddle won't fit the standard horse because they're just like humans at the withers the positioning is off so you know there's so many things to being adjusted with the rider and the horse yes yeah, certainly we we see if the rider has been in that saddle for a very long time and somebody else gets in that saddle they certainly feel wow one side of the saddle is going to be lower than the other and now with all this modern being able to change these saddles it's incredible what they can do to pad up missing muscle in the horse and to pad up missing muscle in the rider as well I've got one rider in Australia who's actually missing a seat bone she's a 
a disabled rider, so hopefully coming to the World Equestrian Games in Kentucky to represent Australia with any, with any luck. She's missing a seat bone. So needless to say, there is no symmetry there at all. So the saddle has to be adjusted specially for her. And, and now we're seeing the technology of being able to do that. It's, it's just a remarkable new field. It's incredible. I know I knew a rider one time that had... Uh, had had polio as a child and had one leg that was about six inches shorter than the other leg. And when he would ride, not only would that throw him off in the saddle, but then he would actually weight that stirrup so that the saddle wouldn't... So he would actually put that... try to figure out before some of all this was in his brain. He said, if I don't get some weight on this side, I'm in trouble. Yeah, we often see... Uh, riders need orthotics in their shoes as a horse often needs corrective shoeing we're seeing a lot of pronation and supination of the feet and a lot of pain in the ankles and it's very very common where one leg is shorter than the other in fact there's a gentleman in Australia that did a PhD just on the length of the femur bone which is your thigh bone and he concluded that nobody's got two legs that are the same you know so everybody seems to have one leg shorter than the other I always look at it this way if the doctor has given you an orthotic or if the doctor has given you a special shoe, then you do need to make some kind of adjustment in the saddle. You might need one stirrup shorter than the other. It is pretty rare, though, that people have uh, such a shortage of, say, for example, six inch inches, like you mentioned, uh, that they would need such an orthotic on the ground. But if they have that orthotic on the ground, they should make an adjustment in the saddle. Well, what you've got is a wonderful program. I've watched you put this on, and we're going to watch you here in just a moment working with um, Kenny Harlow and Scott, Scott Purdom, yeah. and we're going to watch Colleen in action doing that. But in the meantime, Colleen, how do people get a hold of you and learn more about all of your wonderful programs? Well, there's a couple of things. First, in my own website, which is www.colleenkelly.net. But the other thing we're trying to do is encourage coaches into this system because there's a desperate need worldwide for coaches uh, to be uh, accredited in this system. And the International Society of Rider Biomechanics is the official body that governs us. And they're looking for coaches all over the world. And the first step into that program is actually via correspondence. So we've got people in South Africa, Denmark, Japan, China, Australia, New Zealand, all over the world that are doing the certification program and it's relatively inexpensive because it's a scientific body rather than a money-making body. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful way in the door and so we're very much looking forward to bringing coaches into this system. And another thing I'd like to mention is a lot of our coaches, and certainly myself, donate a lot of our time to therapeutic riding, pony clubs, to try to help them give, give back to the industry that were all the gifts that we've been given to you know get us to be world number one at what we do is uh, I've been given a lot of gifts by a lot of people and so if there are therapeutic riding centers out there that are looking for free scholarships often we do donations to them and and help out a bit. Well that's great and do contact Colleen and check it out uh, you know you can obviously from time to time as the thing or you can't see it on camera win a trip to Australia to train with Colleen and the only thing different is they drive the other side of the road you got or like you said they race around the track and but yeah. you're right in Australia they go both ways yeah. back and you know but if you uh, as long as you can learn to drive on the left side of the road you'll be fine but uh, right now Colleen thank you and and let's watch Colleen in action right now on speaking of horses good afternoon ladies and gentlemen my name is Colleen Kelly and how about we uh, give a big round of applause for the cowboy in the black <laughs> Kenny Harlow now oh, we're oh, pushing oh. the one back Woo! <laughs> cowboy in the red Scott Purdom Scott Purdom as a western pleasure western person and Kenny Harlow as a general training person and looking at the differences in the way we do things and I must, I must say that often times as a dressage person, I look at these guys and I say they're doing it better than we are. And I'm happy to put my hand up. I'm the only judge in the world ever to get 100% in the dressage judges exam for Grand Prix. And I look at them and I go, these guys are doing it better than we are. And why not? Why can't I learn from them? 
and hopefully vice versa, that we're all learning a little bit from each other on the different ways that we're doing things. So we're going to start out now, I think probably the order in which we do it in dressage will start out with some of the sideways stuff. And the very first lot of sideways things that we do is leg yield. Now leg yield, I mean the word yield means give in to, the word leg is on the end of your body, so I guess we'll figure out that somehow or another we're going to use our leg and make the horse move away from the leg. As we said this morning, it's handy if you have a leg. I have a lot of disabled riders, they don't have a leg, yet they can still do leg yield. Now, obviously the horse is not leg yielding their leg if you have no leg, but it is still moving sideways. So there are ways to teach your horse to move sideways without the leg, because I've got riders that can... You just <laughs> never know. All right, now they look like... Hey. This is like a new type of side saddle. That's what that I is. I just want him to fall in the mud just once. Please, Lord, yeah. come on. That would be, get the, video, on. the video camera's ready. Come Go on, ahead. Lord, help Somebody me out here. Crack well, this move. horse in the rear end for me. That's not sideways. <laughs> oh, you little cheater. Come on, give him a round of applause. Oh, you got him ready. You got him sideways. <laughs> Good. I don't know, what are you going to do? I don't, I don't do? think I can top that. I think what you did at the Wind Rider Challenge was pretty darn good. I got it. This, yeah, this is around the world. <laughs> when no, they asked on. the horse to do a turn on their haunches, that's what he did, was a turn on the haunches. My leg's too far forward. Oh, all right, of course. There we go. <laughs> Now, you know, you want to think, okay, I'm not sure that I can even cross my legs like that on a chair anymore, much less over the back of a western saddle. He's always got to top me. Oh, you little... Oh, yeah? What's that song? Anything Without you can do, I can do better. <laughs> Check this out. Whoa. Now what are we doing? Whoa. <laughs> uh, holy I think we're fixing to get ourselves killed today. This is what not to do more than what to do. You know what? I know what we can do. Isn't he Rob good? away of melting. Isn't he gone? Oh, he fell off. He fell off. He fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and we can all say that Kenny Harlow fell off in his in his demo. Now what is he doing? Holy cow. <laughs> I hope that was on video, because I want to see a replay of that. I'm pretty sure I couldn't do that. I'd fall right on my head. Well, I was hoping you were going to try right there. <laughs> yeah, right over there, in the mud. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now is look at why you would want yeah. to go sideways. Now, you might be in a trail class where you need the horse to go sideways to open a gate. He smokes like an idiot, which is very naughty and not very recommended, but if the cigarettes are on the fence, you might want to lean over to get your cigarette off the fence. It's a mandatory requirement in dressage that you do leg yield as part of the test. Scott, why don't we um, start with you. Talk me through the leg yield why you would do it from, from the Western Pleasure. Well, well <clears throat> for the Western Pleasure part of it, I mean, there's no show part for Western Pleasure specifically that you need to do any side passing ever for. But there's trail classes, like you kind of already mentioned, uh, trail classes that you need it for. You know, side pass over a rail, side pass uh, um, uh, oh, uh, beside a barrel, or actually sometimes it's backing through cones. So you have to be able to yield the hindquarters a little bit, get it to turn, and, and then back up more, yield the other way. So you might end up using a lot of the, the leg yields for front and back, uh, sometimes you also have to go into a, um, a square that you have to do a spin in. So you have to, and some of those squares aren't big enough for you to actually do a, uh, a turn on the haunches. So it's kind of a half turn on the haunches, half turn uh, on the forehand. So what ends up happening is it's, it's, it's kind of, you have to have all total control of the horse uh, from, from shoulder, rib cage to hindquarters. So if you'd like to come down here for us and maybe show us just a little leg yield, simple leg yield just towards the fence. Okay, you, you want to show us first, Kenny? 
No, we were going to let you. Oh, darn it. I am not going to take your thunder away. <laughs> uh, you going to show me up afterwards? Is that what you're going to do? No, uh, I'm just going to try to be almost as good as you. <laughs> uh, That's a daily task for you, isn't it, Kenny? I, I don't think I can do it, but I'm going to give it a good effort. Okay. So, for the pleasure, now, now this horse, he, when he was young, he actually showed uh, for uh, In Western Pleasure. He actually Quit making excuses before you start. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, um, we never... Hey, everyone, the point, come on, that looks pretty damn nice and right. The point I was making was he never went into... I did this for my own, for my own uh, uh, knowledge and my own use on him. He never really went into any show class for it. But, you know, one thing that you want to really be careful of with it is you want to not have to use your hands. You want to have the horse in a frame, and you want to be able to side pass this horse off your leg while not going forward. See, like there, his head's up. He's actually got to keep his head down. There we go. Keep his head down while side passing. Now, he hasn't really done much of it. There we go. That's a little better. That's better. Good. So he hasn't really done a ton of it for show work. But when you're doing it for the show, you want to actually really get them to have uh, stay in collection out the entire time. Kenny, where are you going? Get your, hey, hey, focus, focus here on the demo. These people over here. Now. She was kind of cute. I know she's cuter than me, but I think you can see these guys are a lot of fun. And that's what it meant to me. You meant to be having that fun, God. All right, so with that being said, now that I want to see Kenny try and take my thunder, and he did. You know, while I was talking, you know, he had to trot away. He has to be known that he's around here when I talk. You know? In my defense, <laughs> your microphone was squealing, so I was telling her which one to turn down and talk. I'm going through puberty. It's more of a personal issue. You don't have to bring it up, <laughs> you know? You buy the silly as well. Okay. Tell me I was some taking that one before you did. So that's side passing. Show me some leg yielding, and in, in dressage terms, the leg yield is pretty much from a straight line and just moving sideways and forward, but not just sideways. We don't do a side pass in, in, um, in dressage, it's not required. Some people start their horses like that. I started like that because I did polo cross. Right. So we had to do side pass because I wanted to push you off. Right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, show, me some, show me some leg yield, Kenny. Let's see. Oh. You want me going this way or this Whatever way? Whatever you like. I, I think if I'm headed towards the audience, they can see more. So. Am I in your way? No. I didn't care if I was. I was just asking. <laughs> <laughs> because since you're there, I'm going to go away from you. <laughs> All right. Now, when we asked Scott to do a leg yield, he did a side pass. And so before I do this, I was going to explain the difference between a leg yield a half pass and a side pass. Your leg yield and your half pass is the exact same movement. The only thing that's different is flexion. Right, Colleen? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, your side pass, you have your horse looking perfectly straight as you do it, like Scott said. But a leg yield, your horse is looking in the opposite direction of travel. So and the horse should be well. moving forward and moving in a diagonal line. And it should look something similar to this, correct? Absolutely. What you want is the horse shoulder and hip to be square. Right. And a little bit of looking away. And Not going too much, a little bit. And traveling forward. Now if I was to do that and it would be a half pass, the movement is identical. The only difference is now he's looking to the left as he's traveling to the left. How's that? Give him a round of applause. Come on. I'm going to dress up, John. That was pretty okay. Pretty okay. Now, the difference mainly in terms of dressage is the actual anatomical difference because leg yield. Uh, have very, very little anatomical value because it's pretty easy for me to just do that. Anatomically, it doesn't, you know, it's not stressing out my muscles. The half pass comes about two years after leg yield because it's more advanced, it's more difficult, and 
for you, it would probably take a lot less because your horses are so obedient. For the dressage, where you've got a lot of conflicting A's and a lot of confusion, it takes at least three years later. The half pass normally done in trot and canter. We train it in walk, but it's performed in trot and canter. And its anatomical value is to improve extended trot. And its anatomical value is to improve extended canter. And the reason is this. If you take a tape measure from the ear to the hip, and the horse is bent like that, and as he stretches and stretches, he opens his outside armpit. And that opening of the outside armpit is what stretches the horse. Now people often say, my horse won't bend. And I don't like the word bend, because somehow or another bend to me means contraction. Bend should mean stretch. Now, if he won't stretch, it's because his muscles are stiff. And that's the exercise that we use. So imagine, therefore, the value of half pass to the racehorse. Because if he can stretch one more inch better than the guy next to him, he's going to win the race. And if you've got a camp draft or a barrel race and you've got a sprint behind, if that horse can stretch one more inch in the half pass, that's the purpose of the half pass because all the dressage movements have a gymnastic uh, quality to them because they're, they're movements from the Civil War, they're movements from the World War II, World War I, where they had to train the horse physically to make the horse more flexible, stronger, and able to be ridden for longer periods. So that's the purpose of the half pass. The, the leg yield, moreover, is more of an obedience game. The leg yield is more of the ability to be able to, uh, you know, move into your enemy, like the boys was having a bit of fun in the beginning, pushing each other around. That's, that's the purpose. But the half pass has an anatomical purpose. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at, now I know you do it very differently, and I bow to you because I tell you what, I've struggled for years and years and years with shoulder in, and, that, and we'll see what this is in a second. And when, the way he did it, I thought, that's a darn sight easier than the way we do it in dressage. And I've been doing it ever since. Funnily enough, and I should have had the courage, but I didn't. Speaking of horses is also made possible through the courtesy of Equine Technologies. For all of your hoof treatment, hoof care, and hoof-related infectious problems, please contact Equine Technologies. Speaking of horses is made possible through the support and courtesy of windmill halters. Top quality halters, leads, collars, and the like for all of your needs. And they can all be monogrammed specifically to meet the name of the horse or dog or the like that you have. Here we see some examples of wonderful monogramming. Monogramhorsehalters.com is the website. You can order online, even specialty fan hangers. And you can have that special horse or chair monogrammed just for you. Thank you to Windmill Halters, supporting Speaking of Horses. Well, that's another episode of Speaking of Horses. Thank you very much for joining us. We're glad you came along, and we all got a chance to look at a little bit of uh, horse history in the making. So uh, join us again next time, the next episode of Speaking of Horses.